Hello friends, this is Jasubaku Hatu, and welcome back to Let's Play Animaniacs for the Sega Genesis. Uh, the reason I keep saying for the Sega Genesis every time we come back to the LP is because there was actually a Super Nintendo version of this game, or rather I guess I should just say not a version of this game really, but a Super Nintendo Animaniacs game, which was completely different from this one, which I guess is just a thing Konami liked to do back in the day, was make two different versions of games for the Super Nintendo and the Sega Genesis and just have them be completely different games from each other. I never I never actually played the Super Nintendo version of this game, but I I, I, I hear that it's uh, not very good at all, so uh, I'm kind of curious to try it, but uh, I probably won't. Anyways, uh, once again we've got sort of our little intro uh, with just sort of throwing in some it's mostly humor, actually. It doesn't really advance the plot, any of this. It's mainly just sort of dialogue. Uh, again, kind of keeping with the spirit of the show. It's, it's, I'm actually it's kind of surprising how good the writing is in this game for the time. It's like not quite up... Like if you're like reading the dialogue here and thinking, Oh, this is what the show is all about. This is the humor of Animaniacs. It's like, it kind of is, but not really. And uh, you, you can actually hit Ralph there to... Uh, sort of stun him, and that'll keep him from throwing bombs at you. But uh, the thing is that the the horse only comes by after he's thrown a certain number of bombs, so you actually get through that uh, get through that part faster by not hitting him. Uh, but anyways, uh, the, the writing in this game is like kind of in the same style as the show, like they have the same kind of uh, humor, and they, they, cap they capture the personalities of the characters pretty well in the dialogue in this game, I feel. I I again, especially considering the time that this game was made. But, uh, yeah, I'd say it's like, again, kind of captures the spirit of the show, but it's not quite up... The writing is isn't quite up to the same standard, I don't think. It it's not quite as witty or clever as the show was, I don't think. And th that's just not, like, that's not just, like, nostalgia for the show <laughs> talking or anything like that. Like, I actually did watch a few, like, a few episodes of the show in preparation for this LP, and uh, yeah, it's a super good show. Again, I, I went over this in the first video, but again, if you haven't seen it, I highly recommend it. Uh, you can get the DVDs, or if you don't want to, uh, or yeah, you get the get the DVD box sets, or if you don't want to dive right in, I'm sure you can find some episodes on YouTube. Uh, and yeah, good stuff. Uh, I'm not sure what episode I'd recommend exactly, but just check out any of them. They're all good, I'm sure. And here we've got a weird little secret. I didn't actually find this for like a long time. I always hit that switch like every time I played through this game without ever knowing what it did. And then, ah, oh, dang it. You know what? Ah, mm. uh, again, stupid completionism, but I'm actually going to off myself here because I, I don't know. Just my weird, again, my weird OCD. I really want to get up there. Oh, yeah. That falling spotlight, spotlight there, uh, again, kind of one of the... Uh, colossal jerk moves that the game likes to do with you because yeah no way to see that spotlight coming if you just walk forward it'll drop down on you and there's no way you'll react in time to dodge it and I, I forget about that stupid spotlight so t so much you have such a limited window of opportunity to react to it that it's basically impossible to dodge on reaction I believe that's the school teacher. It's, yeah, that's a, a, another kind of weird sprite that kind of doesn't really mesh with the style of the rest of the graphics, I feel. But I believe that was the, was the school teacher who, uh, yeah, tried to teach the Animaniacs, I don't know, manners or elocution or something. Or no, elocution was sc scratch and sniff. I remember that one. Uh, oh, right, that was the one with... Uh, Oh, I can't remember what the joke was. There was a, there was a dirty joke in that episode. That that, that was uh, yeah. There was actually uh, I, I think it was uh, this the nostalgia critic or actually yeah. If you want a better introduction to the show than I could ever really give you, uh, the, the nostalgia critic actually had like a super good uh, sort of overview of the or I guess really a tribute to the Animaniacs cartoon series where he uh, he actually did a bunch of interviews. Uh, with like a bunch of people who worked on the show, a lot of the writers and voice actors and stuff. And uh, yeah, he gave like a really, really good retrospective on the series as a whole. And it's like, I, I, I don't know how, uh, if you guys out there, those of you who are familiar with the Nostalgia Critic and like maybe aren't familiar, or maybe aren't fans of his work, uh, I still recommend the Animaniacs episode that he did, even if you aren't a fan of the Nostalgia Critic, because uh, it's quite different from his usual style. And uh, just, yeah, fantastic little retrospective, I feel. Uh, here we've actually got one of the more difficult puzzles in the game. Um, 
kind of finicky. You need this this block, this box right here actually needs to be in a very specific position. If it's too far over, then this one just drops down in this space. And if it's too far over on this side, you don't have enough space to jump over on the other side. Kind of a finicky, uh, yeah, kind of a finicky crate puzzle. And this here is another jerk move. If you uh, try to hammer those blocks, um, you need this block on, you need this crate on top to push onto those flames over there. So if, if you, uh, yeah, hammer these blocks without pushing that one to the side first, then it drops down and you're unable to use it, and you have no choice but to take damage on those flames. Which again, on hard mode, uh, probably means close to instant death. Which is, uh, not good. Um, I don't know, I, considering how flagrant the game is with that kind of stuff, where it's just like completely unfair damage that you sometimes need to take, I almost feel that it is kind of deliberate to get... Like, the, I, I kind of feel that the game designers work sort of deliberately trolling you. Just because, I don't know, it just seems so flagrant, and, and it crops up so often, and I, I don't know if you guys like that kind of thing or not. Personally, I kind of do in some games that are easy otherwise. Like, um, Sonic the Hedgehog had a little bit... Whoops. A little bit of... Ah. A little bit of that kind of nonsense in certain stages, especially in Carnival Night. Uh, Sonic the Hedgehog 3 threw a lot of kind of silly situations at you in that zone. But they were kind of fun, because Sonic the Hedgehog is not a very difficult game to get through, so it's like, okay, who cares, this is funny. And Sonic the Hedgehog never actually killed you. Or this usually didn't kill you with this kind of, uh... Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, sort of game developers trolling you type moments. It would mainly just sort of bounce you around like a pinball all over the place and make it a really, uh, like, a huge pain to progress. But I kind of liked it in that game just because, uh... Yeah, it was just kind of funny. It's like, it wasn't that much of a de- not that- it wasn't that much of a setback, and it was just kind of funny. And I feel- kind of feel the same way about some of the jerk moves that this game pulls on you. Like this one here, the nur or actually this isn't really that much of a- but yeah, Hidden Nurse, locking you in place and making you waste time. I guess time is actually a factor in this game. I- it's so- I don't think I've ever ran out of time in this game, in like, ever, at any time that I've ever played it. And yeah, here we've got the God Pitch, and this is actually a really difficult. Ah, that's actually a really difficult jump. This is a shortcut here. There's sort of a regular path. Actually, I don't want to take the shortcut because there's something I want to show off. But uh, yeah, that's like a really difficult jump, and it's not really a big shortcut either. I'm actually curious to as to whether the guys on uh, if, if there's a like a, a well-optimized speed run for this game. This here we've got Pinky in the Brain. I'm sure anyone who knows Animaniacs knows Pinky in the Brain, but this is actually a reference to a specific episode um, where, yeah, the Brain, uh, or Brain became a country music singer in order to insert subliminal messages into his songs and brainwash the world by, yeah, making them all listen to his songs and get brainwashed by sublim subliminal messages. Whoops. Except, uh, yeah, in order to become a country music singer, he needed... There were, like, all these requirements. He needed to, uh, have at least three names. No less than three names, so he changed his name to, uh, something like Bubba Bob, 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 Bob Brain or something. And then, uh, I forget what all the others are. Oh, that is a really difficult jump, but... And one of the, one of the other requirements was, uh, a height of at least six feet, so... Yeah, hence the giant... <laughs> incredibly thin stick legs. Um... And yeah, there was actually another callback to... Gosh, I'm having a really tough time with this jump. Do you, it usually doesn't doesn't take me this many tries to get this, or at least on my test plays I got this on my first try. But anyways, um, in the very first level, uh, if you actually... When I shot myself out of that cannon in the very first level, if you just pause... Uh, right as I'm sort of uh, arcing over there, you can actually... If you pause it uh, right uh, at a certain spot, you can see Pinky in the brain very briefly. It's like, it's kind of a blink and you'll miss it kind of moment. They're only on, on screen for like less than half a second. But, uh, and, and they're with a, like a giant sort of suit, which is another callback to a specific episode of the show where I believe uh, Brain needed to get a job in order to, I don't know, commit insurance fraud or something? Or, I don't remember exactly how it worked, but he need, needed to, he needed, he needed to sue his employer to get money to make some device or something. Um, here, once again, uh, it's, you can uh, fire off pies from this pie launcher here a bit quicker by using the animation camp cancelling. Or by using, yeah, using the quicker animation of your jump hammer attack. 
And because this thing moves around randomly, like, it, it, it looks like you could time it here, but you actually can't, because uh, the thing moves around randomly every time you hit it, so that you can't actually really time it at all, uh, because it could hop left or right, for all you know. You have no idea where the pies are going to come out in the end, so you need to... The, what I do for that section is just... Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, I always just hit it as fast as I can. Uh, your only reward for this little crate puzzle here is some ice cream, which I actually do want to grab, because this next boss uh, is probably the worst part of the game, I think, or at least one of the worst parts. There, there's actually a few kind of nasty things that the game does to you. I'm actually not sure that that's sound, so I'll just push it over a bit. But, uh, yeah, this boss is... Th this next boss coming up is kind of a puzzle boss, and the solution to this kind of puzzle boss is really dumb. And, uh, yeah, it actually took me forever to figure this... In fact, I don't think I ever figured this boss out really as a kid. I just kind of figured out a few things you can do with it, and then just kind of messed around until things worked out in the end eventually. But the mechanics of this boss fight are, like, weirdly obtuse, and it's, like, really difficult to figure out on your own. So basically what's going to happen here is I'm up here on the train engine, uh, you can see that smokestack on the top is opening and closing, so you want to hit the coal into that smokestack, but if you hit it when it's closed, then the, uh, yeah, then the coal will bounce back at you and actually damage you if it hits you. And uh, the opening and closing of the smokestack is slightly random. So, whoops, uh, so yeah, it can actually be, like, a really difficult, and of course, Ralph is chasing you this whole time. Whoops, ah, oh, I didn't want to switch there. So, yeah, you've kind of, kind of got to contend with, like, you want to be hitting, uh, getting coal into the stack. And yeah, actually, that's one nice thing you can do. So, you actually do more damage that way if you, uh, sort of, uh, yeah, push, uh, sort of dodge forward as he's jumping at you, and you do more damage. And then, so once you get enough damage on him, he loses his little uh, cart that he was riding on, and he starts running after you. And at this point, you can actually win the fight. And th the way that you win at this point is by continuously uh, popping coal into the smokestack. Except you need to get like a certain number in a row. Once you get to the front of the screen here, after Ralph's taken enough damage to start running at you, then, oh, dang it. Yeah, sometimes it just closes on you and there's not much you can do about it. It's really frustrating sometimes, the way the smokestack just randomly closes or doesn't open for you. Although, one thing that I have found is that no matter what you do, you will all pretty much never be able to get two... You'll never be able to pop coal into the stack twice before it closes. So basically, once you get the coal in there, you've got to wait till it closes, because you just, you will not be able to get two in there before it closes. But uh, yeah, really weird the way the mechanics of that fight work. It's like, yeah, you can damage him with the paddle, damage him by sort of dodging forward at just the right time when he's jumping at you, but uh, you won't beat him by just damaging him, and you won't beat him by just running away. You need to damage him enough and then run to the front of the screen, which doesn't really make a lot of sense, but uh, I don't know. Anyway, it, it took me forever to figure out as a kid, and even in my test plays, when I was playing through this game again, I just, yeah, it didn't, I don't know, it didn't seem particularly intuitive or easy to figure out. It's like, I, yeah, I can definitely see, like, even, like, someone who isn't a stupid little kid having, like, a lot of difficulty figuring out, figuring out what you need to do with that fight, and even apart from figuring it out, just... Oh, that stupid opening and s closing smokestack is just really irritating. Yeah. One of the low points of the game, in my opinion. But, uh... So yeah, but we've got that behind us, and uh, nothing but good times ahead of us from here on out. I hope you will join me for them, if... Uh, yeah, if you've been enjoying yourself so far. If not, uh, I promise the next one will be better. Honest. Uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.